I'll need you. Let me see. How about right now? There you go. Recording in progress. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, John, are you recording? I will be, but I won't until you count the countdown. Okay, good. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, February the 13th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello. That must be me. I'm the Wombat. That's right. And we also have George Brown, the two and a half from East Tennessee. Hello. We have Hello. John Richards from uh, England, across the pond with the parliament in the background. Hello. And Judd Pirate Higgs. Hello. Uh, the piratey voice of Judd Pirate Higgs. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, so you're bound to have several of them in your town. Uh, we'll tell you more about the uh, the Atheist Society of Knoxville. I'll get it out here in a minute after the mid-show break, so be sure to hang around. Wombat, what are we going to be talking about today? Should you become a Christian? And what would it take for that to finally happen? We're going to do some good salesmen. Uh, door-to-door style to get you on the path of Christ as soon as we possibly can. Uh-huh. Your time is running out. <laughs> time's running out. The time's running out every day. You never know. Anyway, guys, I've been waiting That's for this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, I want to do a weekly invocation with our own Dread Pirate Higgs and then catch up with everybody. Dread Arr! Arr! Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, El Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. Man, I've been waiting for a while to hear that from you, Dread. Dread, how you been? (laughs) Uh, good. Working lots. Uh, if I'm on day shift, of course, I run six to six. So that puts me outside of uh, being able to record or stream the show. Sure, sure, sure. But I'm here this week. I will be gone for the next two. Um, wow. But, okay. Uh, okay. My invocation will last a good long time for you. Wonderful. Uh-huh. The, the noodles stretch onwards through time. That's and space right. Yes. So I will ask you this. Your beard looks a little different. I thought last time I saw you, you were going like a little uh, braid on it. Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. no longer the case or is it just free hanging today? Well, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's free hanging today. Yeah, free Usually I, I, sometimes <laughs> I, I put a, a bead in it. And so what I do is I, I just put a piece of dental floss and I, take the Mm -hmm. thing and I wrap it around my beard. I throw a bead on. Okay. Pull the the dental floss out and it's a free hanging willy there, you know? All right. All right. All right. (laughs) Hang loose. Hang loose, my friend. Hang loose. Exactly. John Richards, I got a question for you. So there was this thing called Google Glass and everybody hated it because it had a camera pointed at people, whoever you're looking at. And then that dropped because people understood that they hate cameras. Then Apple does the exact same thing. They put three cameras on their phone and now everyone carries around a camera in their breast pocket and it's just recording everything they're looking at too and no one has a problem with that and i'm wondering is it google pioneering the 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 that the whole you know disdain against cameras and making it okay or is it just apple that is that cool of a company and people don't care about them anymore so like what's going on there why are you recording me i feel very uncomfortable i'm not recording you it's not it's not like it's really fun at the <laughs> there's cameras on both sides nice try what? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks looks as I sneakily am recording you, doesn't it? But I, I honestly not. But you've got to catch the public mood when it when it's right, you know. Because take for example, the last two years, mm. many many of us have got comfortable with zooming and even with YouTubing. Lots of us are, are YouTube channel owners now. Yep. We do live streaming all the time. The mm. public mood is changing. And yeah. we're now ready for a Mike and Cam social media site, and I'm working on it. 
Very cool. Very cool. You know what? I'm glad because things are constantly changing. We need to keep up with them if we're going to stay on top of things. But we also need to support the clubs and, and organizations that may need our assistance in keeping up with times. Yeah. And I think a good way of doing that is making sure that we spread virtual awareness for uh, causes that are coming up in the future. And I, I think you happen to know of one that's coming up. Would you mind talking to us about it? Uh, you do you mean my free thought city? I think there's a fundraiser coming up, sir. That oh, sorry, you, you mean my, my fundraiser? Yeah, I, I do so much scheming. I lose you do track so of, much. He's in everything. <laughs> I lose track of what I'm doing. But yes, this coming Saturday, there's a fundraiser relay. Mm. So, so it starts in the UK with, I'm hosting it. I've got a, a co-host who's going to join me. And people will come on for 10 minutes or so. I've got some entertainment items as well and clips of, to in, involve the audience in guessing what things are and that sort of stuff. And who's the, that Pokemon? I love it. Or, or that, yeah. who's that atheist? There you it, go. Exactly, that sort of thing. And, and it, it's all in aid of recovering from religion organization, mm. which is, does sterling work, as you know. And then I hand over the baton after three and a half hours to the UK, uh, sorry, the USA leg of this relay. And that's uh, Ethan Michael, who's carrying on with the show for another four hours. And hopefully, and I'm working on this, they will, he will then hand over to the Australian leg of this marathon fundraiser, which is going to be hosted by some friends of mine in Australia and Japan. So there you go. Has there it ever been done before? No. Well, that's interesting. I've never heard of such a thing. I can't wait to be a part of it. And I hope, you know, it's successful. Um, I guess we'll have more details about where we can find it. The, uh, in sure. the company. Where can we keep track of that? I will post you in our messenger where, where, we, uh, where we chat okay. in between and times. And, and we, will, we will put it up on the details underneath this uh, video. And just for a heads up, it's planned for release on the 19th of February. So it'll be before yeah. our next gathering or our next show, That'll right? It'll be on the Saturday, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. It'll be on a yeah. Saturday, correct. That's right. All right. Uh, so we got a new guy coming in here. Hey, when you get your audio hooked up, feel free to, to take part of the chat. But Larry, perhaps you know him. Uh, who, who do we, who's our new guest right now? Um, this is a new lady. It's a lady. She's got a kind of a toboggan hat on. Toboggan um, hat. Yeah. We her online name is Kristen T. Martin, and I'm glad she joined us today, but she looks like she's going to be a little bit uh, getting the audio and video synced up. Sure, but, uh, sure, sure. She sure. should be in. She's just a longtime friend. Atheist. Yeah. What else is Zoom without technical issues, though? Speaking of right. which, Larry, <laughs> how you been? How have you been over the last couple of days? Are you wearing suspenders, too? What's going on here? I'm wearing suspenders. I have freed my waist. <laughs> so nice. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm coming up on my 70, 72nd birthday, and uh, I'm getting a little more pear-shaped. And if I loosen my belt, <laughs> uh, my pants seem to fall down, so it's, I'm getting to that age. Yeah, but, right. Uh, I'm dealing with it, and it's kind of cool. I can walk around like a southern lawyer now. And <laughs> nah, yeah, you would make a great southern lawyer, man. You would make a great southern lawyer. It's just like, I think this guy is innocent. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I like this guy. I like this guy. Yeah. All right. Uh George Brown, the second and a half. How you been since last week, my friend? Well, I've been I've been just fine. And apropos of today's topic, uh, a neighbor had made an attempt to convert me to Christianity, and um, I've been thinking about it a okay. lot. Okay. Um, mostly, really, really angry at the assumption that I'm right for the plucking. Now, why aren't you? Like, what? Tell me what the problem. Well, we is. should get into that when we get into the topic of the show. We can start okay, off with okay. That. indeed, you indeed. Know, but I, I need to lose can. He never know what he's going. Sometimes you yeah. have to ride the wave and yeah. just like try to like control it. But yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> hey, well, let's yeah. introduce. Yeah, I, I thought I'd put it out as a teaser. Yeah. Kristen. Well, let's introduce and welcome our new guest, uh, Kristen. You're muted. Um, if you can unmute your mic. I think she kind of froze up there. <clears throat> yeah, she might be having some technical issues. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, whenever hey. you're able, whenever you have those <laughs> results, feel free to jump back in. But uh, how about we go into the actual topic? So George okay. Brown, I wonder if he's Can you now. hear me? I uh, have a button push. Uh, it's yeah, a little bad. Push a button. The audio is dragging. Well, good. 
Yeah, but we're coming, <laughs> you're coming through. This is Hi, Hi Chris. Everybody. Hey, Chris, and we appreciate it. Anyway, you feel free to, we're happy that you're on the show. Feel free to um, um, uh, jump into the topic as we go into it. And if you know sign language, it's more than better to, <laughs> that I can help you translate. <laughs> so, oh, okay, 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 peace, let's go. All right, so George Brown, someone said you should become a Christian. I think that's a good topic that everybody should be talking about today. Why? Well, I know we are Christians, but I don't know if it's a conscious decision on our parts or if it's just, you know, the default. I know, for example, John Richards, you were never really born into the flock. And now that you are president of atheism in the UK, <laughs> mm -hmm. is it just the money that's keeping you away from going into the church? Because I can guarantee you there's probably a lot more money. It's a very lucrative position for you as the president of atheism to jump into Christianity now. Why aren't you taking the money? Why aren't you becoming a Christian, John? <laughs> well, that would be hypocritical, I think. <laughs> like, oh, that would be perfect for Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. Incidentally, I get nothing for my pains for being president of AUK. Mm. So it, it wouldn't be difficult to earn more. <laughs> anyway, the question, why should, why should I become a Christian? Well, why should I become a believer of any God until they've been demonstrated to actually exist? Okay. And if I was to choose to join a religion, it probably wouldn't be Christianity because the Christian God, certainly the Old Testament version of the Christian God, he's not a very nice fellow. He's not a very nice fellow, not the top nice fellows. In fact, I'll be honest with you. Uh, and this is so, the part where I get clipped and, and thrown up in debates, but I have found Satan to be substantially more polite in yes. asking for consent. And, and, and informing and, naked people about proper dietary, you know, <laughs> advice. And, and, and much, less, much less of a murderer, too. Much less of a murderer. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Kristen, Kristen's stripping, it looks like. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> uh, on radio, she's just taking off her jacket. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so, so if I was to join a religion, it, it would... Hmm. It would possibly be, I don't know, Buddhism, you know, one of the pa least Pastafarianism? Pastafarianism? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Yes, I, I go with Pastafarianism. Definitely. They definitely have the better potlucks, I'll tell you that. Yes, yes, uh, I, like, I like pasta. Mm. Uh, Kristen approves. Dred, I'm going to ask you this question. Why aren't sure. you becoming a Christian? I Listen, you love Pastafarians, and you know Christians hate that Pastafarian thing. But listen, you know you like wearing religious garbs. You'd be able to wear all the religious garb if you were a Christian. Think about that. You'd be able to spot yourself out with the Christian necklaces, the Christian things, and people would love to take your pictures and put them on government IDs. No one will give you any trouble whatsoever. Isn't that That's right? I'm a bit of a contrarian, so uh, that's why I've, uh, you know, uh, sticking with apostafarianism. And I just wanted to, it probably won't show up here, but. Get it in my... focus. This we, this has been a long time coming. So it's finally, so you're finally showing us the tricorn on your driver's license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, that's, that's actually my uh, private investigator license. So I am now a, a PI. Uh, oh, really? Thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And what a uh, weird and after a sidekick. Live. <laughs> After a long fight, they finally uh, put my allowed me to have my tricorn in my picture, as you can see there. So one day you're going very to cool. about all your jobs, Dred, because this is very, very <laughs> yes. Indeed. When's the series coming impressive. out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm actually uh, in Yellowstone North. I don't know if you've seen the series Yellowstone on Prime TV. Mm. Um, oh, if, really? If you check that out, yes. Uh, this is I'm living the real thing in Canada, and it's Are actually. You a regular? Uh, I, but yeah, I, I go up uh, for every 10 days for 10 days. Wow. Very what's cool. Your, Fred, what's, yeah. your, what's your PI number? Is it 3.142? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know How that's a know? reference to something. Uh, yeah, pi, Magnum right? PI? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Pi, it's, uh, the number it's pi. The, it's yes. a number thing. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, nerds. <laughs> we are going on to Larry. Larry, let me tell you something. You've been, you, you, I'm going to be honest with you, you've been wasting a lot of time with this whole atheist thing. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you feel nice to relax in your retirement years? You'd be able to relax, sit down, and just enjoy and bask in the glory of God, right? What mm -hmm. would it take for you to become a Christian, my friend? Come on. You're what already wearing suspenders. Me? <laughs> uh, well, it would take changing well, about 37 different beliefs in my whole worldview, the first okay. of which is the belief in a soul. 
I mean, why would I want to become a Christian since I don't believe in a soul or an afterlife? Never mind a God or Jesus or sin or hell and all that good stuff. You know, it, it would be a major shift in my world outlook. And um, each one would have to be supported with evidence and reason. Mm. So um, yeah. they're not going to just get me by coming and knocking on my door and showing me the Bible and saying it's God's word. That won't do it. They have to do a little better than that. Yeah, I think once you've once you've had the blue pill, you can't do the red pill anymore or, or the I've other heard, way around. You know, I heard yeah. that though there are such things as born again Christians. Right. And a lot of them do come from a as supposedly or allegedly atheist backgrounds. They'll be like, yeah. well, I was an atheist for a month and I realized that I didn't hate God enough. So therefore, I went back to being right. a Christian and the problem. Yeah, go for it, Dred. Thank you. Well, I was just going to say, if you remember that uh, one time we had that uh, guest on who, who was the, the born again, but it was, it was pretty clear that he had not fully divorced himself uh, from his prior beliefs and was yeah. a, essentially a, a, a latent Christian. Yeah, he was an angry um, Christian. He wasn't yeah, an angry atheist. He was an angry Christian. So calling himself an atheist, of course. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which, of course, sort of illegitimizes the whole word or, or term uh, you know, on, on behalf of us all because, uh, you know, it, it muddies the water, essentially, it muddies the terminology. Absolutely. Absolutely. John Richards. I'm wondering about the need for anybody to worship anything. I mean, hey. what, what is this? Is it some sort of endemic subservience or something? Right. I mean, yeah, you know, don't you think that God deserves the credit, though? Like, if you made a pie <laughs> and it was a delicious pie and you're like, hey, can I get a compliment for the pie? You're like, why do I have to compliment you as the baker? Shouldn't you just be making pies? It's like, I feel, I mean, I, I worked really hard on that pie. Don't you feel like God worked really hard on space, time, and reality as we know it? <laughs> well, I, I've had a little debate today on Facebook on one of our, my favorite sites, which is called Unbelievable, question mark where I argue with people. And this, this particular Christian said, look around you, you know, the trees. <laughs> yeah, the trees. <laughs> there, there's your evidence for God. Yeah. So I said, oh, and so beauty and harmony is evidence for Uncle Uncle, is it? Cool. He's my right. favorite God, Uncle Uncle. Uncle Uncle. Okay, Larry, let's Don't go. Don't know him. No, I was just wondering, uh, what's his purpose? What, why would he create uh, space, time, the universe? Because he loves every, you, Larry. No, it's no, in no, the no, book. No, 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 no. Apparently, apparently, he's creating the you know the universe and and worlds and gravity and physics and all this other good stuff just so that it would support a bunch of people to praise him. Yeah. You know, That's just awesome. just to create a choir to sing his praises. Praises. That's why you exist. It's why you have souls. Like, you know, that's the whole system. Mm -hmm. Come on, play yeah. with the system, Larry. Dread, what's up? Yes. Well, you know, I, I've thought about this. Uh, you know, if if God had created the universe and all things in it, why why atoms? Like, why why you know do we have quarks? Why not just magic? You know what I mean? Oh, like mm -hmm. back in right. you know back in early Christian times, of course, it was just magic because there was no real explanation. There was no science. There was no examination of the details of things. It was, it was because it was, and mm. there was no need to explain. So, um, you know, it, if God can, is all powerful, then he doesn't need atoms and quarks to constitute the universe. He doesn't need the constants finely tuned sure. to accommodate life in the universe. It's just magic. It just there doesn't need to be a code that it, we're slowly it, it, revealing. Exactly. There it doesn't, doesn't need to be. Yeah, we don't need genes. We don't need proteins. We don't need biology. We don't need anything. It's just magic. A table but, should just be a table. Though right. I will throw this out. I you you're worried about and confused about atoms. I'm always confused about nipples. There seems to be twice as many nipples <laughs> in existence than there actually needs to be. Yes, I, I if would. We lost with half that. of them. No one would care. No one would be like, oh, right. this is, I'm yeah. lighter. Everything's great. I want to give a chance for George to jump in because George, this was originally your topic. Now listen, what's what's this whole idea of you being um, addressed or uh, propositioned with the idea of becoming a Christian? Would you mind giving me the backstory there? And you, oh, good mute technique. Look at that. Mute. Well, um, I, I, I mean, I, I don't think we've got enough time for me to get into this very much, but I have a neighbor who came around and um, handed me this 
thick pamphlet. I don't think you can see what it says. It looks so, uh, oh, it's huge. It says, peace, it, it says, peace I give to you. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, so and what this is, <laughs> this is the Gospel of St. John. Now, uh, to recap here a little bit, I am an organic Jewish atheist. Mm. Meaning that <laughs> Jewish culturally, but not raised in any religion. That's right, not raised in any religion and not raised with God in the house whatsoever. Mm. It's, you know, um, I, I never had to negate any kind of religious indoctrination because I didn't have. Well, it sounds like you're ripe for the picking. You should become my... a Christian. You should become a Christian. Why aren't you a Christian right now? Tell me. Well, I'll tell you. Um, the first thing is that in in parting with this woman, I said, I mean, I, I allowed that I had a Jewish background to her. And she asked me if I hated Jesus. She said, do you hate Jesus? I said, what? <laughs> you know? I said, of course not. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and, um, I realized that we were on different planets this person and, and me. I mean, I know that she attends the mothership of all the Baptist churches in my county. Now, to give you an, an idea of the um, the nature of evangelicism where I live, we have a couple of counties here, uh, a, a larger one and a smaller one. And there is a so-called daily newspaper which comes out four days a week. And on Friday, they publish a list of all the houses of worship in the two counties. And one day I got out my pen and I counted all of them that were listed. So I know what I know there are. So anyway, this woman attends the mothership of all the Baptist churches. Believe it or not, it's hard for me to get my head around this number, but there are 167 official Baptist churches in these two counties. Sure. Yeah. Wow. I mean, even that my is town, staggering. That is just so overwhelming to me. My, my town has less of a population of 5,000 and there's 67 different <laughs> churches here. Oh my goodness. And they're all Christian. But churches. I'm just talking, uh, I'm just talking about I, Listen, here's the funny thing too. I can, I can tell you directions by the street or by the church name. And so I could say, just take XYZ road here, or I can be like, go past... <laughs> the passion of the christ take a left at the new belief turn right at the the god sakes of right, all right. sheep and then yeah. turn right at the the new truth and then you'll be so right. all the christian landmarks are the way to get around town gotcha <laughs> it's the way you yeah. need to get around yeah. what's up well, let, I, would, I, 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 let's I was try to talking to, uh, about the the let's try to get to everybody dread pirate what's up well i was just going to say that um uh, our church has had another uh success the church of the flying spaghetti monster We've successfully applied to uh, the Adopt a Highway program. Wonderful. And so they are posting uh, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster and crew as a uh, Adopt a Highway mm -hmm. sponsor for a two uh, kilometer section here. And uh, there's uh, on either side of the town, you know, you have the Rotary and uh, the Lions Club uh, entry signs. Mm -hmm. Well, they have one for all the uh, Christian churches in town and they're on private property. And nobody maintains them. So I talked to the owner of the Extra Foods, this grocery store here, on whose property one of those signs is. And I have his permission to add the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster to that sign. So, oh, it's, oh. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well done. No, very good. Thank you. Fred and your mission of chaos. Dude, I tell you, if I lived in British Columbia, we would have so much fun together. Oh, Columbia. yeah. What are yeah. we doing today? You can, always, you can always come visit. I've got a room for you. Oh, man, that's fantastic. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see about this. This sounds awesome. Okay, John Richards, uh, we'll, I would like to close on one other idea. I think I saw your hand raised, and if not, let me put well, it Yeah, I just oh, wanted oh, to pick up, pick up on a couple of things, because Fred mentioned that... Um, uh, we're all atoms and you know physical material phenomena and yeah, then and, um, and then George talked about him and his neighbor being on different planets and it made me wonder 
since we know that God is immaterial, I'm How do we know that? Sorry. Well, we, Sorry. we're told we're told that the Christians always tell us that, especially when they when we push them to give us evidence and they say, sure. well, oh, we can't, mm -hmm. we can't do that because sure. he's sure. immaterial. Uh, so that's their get out. Uh, but um, it makes me wonder why, why this immaterial God wants these material things. Are we his Lego, do you think? Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I am just blown away by the level of grammatical accuracy that you have, John Richards. It is pronounced Lego. Anyone who says Legos is wrong. So that I'm just blown away by that. Yeah, but also the concept of a playground. It seems bizarre. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Guys, I think we're near the end of the half hour. We'll, we'll come back and check up on Kristen's audio and then see if she can join in the conversation. Larry, why don't you take us out? Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Okay. Four, three... Two. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're now in our 20th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly in person meetings in the Knoxville's old city, Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Uh, look for us inside at the high top tables, usually the loudest and happiest group. If you'd like to join our Tuesday evening virtual Zoom meeting, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can also find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to their website at knoxvilleatheist.org or you can Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. Um, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Got a quick comment. I cry 3000 has said a comment to Dread. Dread, I took some action to get you to 100 subscribers. Uh, my Thank daughter you. subscribed to your channel. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations thank, so thank, thank you, you so yes i and i uh so i've changed so i've customized the name to mind pirate nice. and i will be uh making my first um studio produced uh talk mm. on the higgs boson oh i love that it. that oh. will be my introduction to the youtube oh the, the boson that was named after you yeah that's the one <laughs> just as a heads up i cry 3000 was 99 daughter was 100 sweet Nice. Well, That's thank you very much, both of you. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, I, I, what am I saying? You're welcome. Anyway, <laughs> Kristen, I hope you're here. Would you mind giving us your life story in 30 seconds? Go. <laughs> oh, Kristen, introduce yourself. There you go. All right. Can you hear me? I'm, yes. Uh, yep. Okay. I'm here in the Bible Belt uh, in the South in the United States. I know Larry. Mm -hmm. um, my parents did not, and they went to great pains to not indoctrinate me into any philosophy. And so hats off to all of us because we're really the outliers in our society Sweet. here, just totally. So mm -hmm. that's wow. it in a nutshell. Uh, wow. I, you know, we're all facing the same things in our society with uh, people trying to make religion and God part of uh, government separation of church and state mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. now, let me ask this question, Kristen. Did you ever feel tempted to go into uh, uh, Christianity? Like you see the people celebrating Christmas, you see how happy they are, maybe with Hanukkah, whatever they got going on. Did you ever want to be a part of that? Did anyone ever make a compelling argument for you to join the fold? Um, well, I mean, my parents made sure that we had uh, Christmas and everything. It just wasn't with God or any mm. kind of indoctrination. It was with Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I did have friends growing up who always wanted to invite me to their churches and everything. And it just would always just be so mind blowing that I knew all of these people and all around us, even still today, as you all very well know, yeah. who are, are genuflecting to this unknown, unseen, 
thing that is like he was saying from UK is just not in this realm. Well, if yeah. he's not, I can make the assertion of the flying spaghetti monster or the Thank flying you. teapot or anything. So mm -hmm. um, I just, yes, I did try to pray to God once. Uh, he didn't answer. And that was really the end Surprising. of it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, you actually bring up a really good point. I like that you address this to Dread. Dread, is there a rival teapot religion that the Pasifarians can like group up with and fight against? Because you're not Abs a religion. Absolutely. Like you have an enemy. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Russell's teapot. I love that. Um, yeah. We have uh, people. And the thing is, the belief in the flying spaghetti monster is not exclusive. So, uh, and that's why we have the God back guarantee. Uh, try us out for 30 days and and if you don't if you don't like us your god will likely take you back so yeah, yeah. You, I love people it. can hold multiple beliefs about the uh nature of the universe and an not be in conflict yeah cool. we love them all we'll take them all uh john what's up well i've been thinking about this should i become a christian mm. idea this theme mm. and it, it's a question of what does becoming a Christian actually mean? It means following some humans, doesn't it? And then, interesting. Of, interesting. of course, then, then we've got to find, we've got to choose which humans to follow. And because Kristen is in the, the Southern States at the moment, I want to mention a couple of news items that's happened this week. In Oklahoma, Senator Rob Standridge has introduced a bill that would allow people to sue teachers if they offer opposing view towards religious beliefs held by students. Wow. So you can, is that in America? Is that in America? Yeah, yeah, Oklahoma, yeah. All right, don't wanna get on too much of a tirade here, but yes, America can sue anybody for any reason because we have a, a law system that's based on, on what Dolly. happened in court. Dolly, right? come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Okay, we have a law system that's based on what happens in court here. It's not a law system that's like first made in parliament and then those are the rules that goes on. I forgot yeah. what the, the premise is, but it throws a lot of people. It's not a great system, let me tell you, but yeah. it is a flexible system that only changes when you litigate. And so yeah, because yeah. of that, anybody can sue anybody. I can right. sue you for saying that right now. It might get yeah. dismissed in court, but then the premise or the precedent becomes anybody who sues another person in Zoom just gets dismissed in court because that person did it. Yeah, right? founded on practice. Yeah. So like right. you can, as a politician, make legal to sue, uh, I don't know, cupcake people, because if you want to make points against the anti cupcake people, but it's not really doing anything. It's just useless posturing. And yes. I, it's unfortunate, but yeah, let's not it's a litigious not society. Yes. A litigious yeah. society. Yeah, and, <laughs> and they're actually passing laws now that allow people to sue over just about anything that they don't like. Yeah. Um, but like, like uh, we've always had that. It's just okay. a question well, of it gets dismissed in court or it gets passed through in court. Then it becomes an issue. Yeah, but I mean, they're passing laws like in Arkansas or something. And they, if somebody tries, if a teacher tries to introduce a, uh, a certain anti religious topic, uh, then they, they pass the law to allow people to sue that teacher uh, think, and she cannot appeal. Uh, I mean, and, no, it's just, and if, you if can, there's a fine, the teacher has to hey! pay out of their own pocket. No, it can't be covered by. The, uh, the school or any other organization. So, uh, and I, I want to mention another issue in the same sort of part of the world where this is a Texan senator, famous Ted Cruz, and he's mentioning Dreadwell like this because he's taking, he's, a, he's a, agreeing with Canadian QAnon truckers. Right, who, right. Yeah, and he's suggesting that what they should do is let the people of Vancouver starve as a punishment for the wow. government's COVID-19 vaccine mandates. I'm so not going to let saying, you take us on this tangent. That's enough global atheist news for right now. You got your own <laughs> channel, John Richards. Let's get back to last chat. We're talking about if she should become a Christian. Let me tell you something. Well, it's, for it's me, a case of, it's a case of which me, Christians you want to follow. Yeah, but for me, what it would take for me to become a, not a Christian, what for me it takes me to believe, if all a Christian is is someone who believes that the Christian God is real, if that's all it took, then I would just need a demonstration that that God was actually real. And if it was revealed to everybody, I don't know what the standard would be, but like if it was, if that God knew the standard it would take for, for convincing everybody, and I was part of that system, I would have no choice but to believe in that God at that point. 
Whether or not I worship after the fact is a completely different issue. And so I may not even be a Christian, even if I know there is a Christian God. But if I knew the God was real, and I'm going to throw this question out to everybody too, uh, Dread Pirate, feel free to give me your comment, but also answer the question. If you were able to have a revelation of that Christian God, then would you start believing in the God? And would you then start worshiping after the fact? Go for it, Dred. Absolutely. If the, if the evidence, uh, you know, was uh, strong in that uh, there was actually a God and a Christian God. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, sure. Um, but uh, we have to remember Hebrew, Hebrews 11, um, which uh, says that uh, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And things not seen so exactly so i can't use faith so there is no evidence <laughs> there is no evidence that needs to be provided because faith is the basis for a belief in god yeah so you wouldn't have faith anymore if god actually did reveal himself that's right you. That's See, very... you, you would be believing on evidence and not on faith it's a catch-22 situation it's a catch-22 because yes. even if you become a christian because god revealed himself to you you can't use faith to get to god anymore because you now have the revelation so it's exactly. just like what are you doing what are you doing you're it, yep. it's an impossible circle anyway oh i'm so frustrated <laughs> a tautology it's a oh, it's a it's a not tall it's not ology <laughs> okay dread or oh, i'm sorry george brown love for you oh love for you to weigh in <clears throat> let's see i'm gonna get you unmuted sir. there he is there you are go for it hopefully Kristen. can you hear me dog. yeah well, um, to, uh, you know, to, to return to the person who's trying to convert me to Christianity, my first order of business is if you want me to convert me to Christianity, the first thing you have to do is gain my respect. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And then we can talk. So the first thing is I think you guys are hypocrites right off the bat because you say, tell me that uh, Jesus is love or God is love. And then you're beating on everybody who is different than you. I can't respect that. <laughs> what kind of love is that? So, mm. you know, you know, and then I, I look at this pamphlet that she gave me and I come from a Jewish background and it's bad mouthing the Jews for you know, in mass for betraying Jesus to the Romans, she's bad mouthing me. Mm, I hear it. I hear it, Larry. And this has been used for centuries to murder and slaughter people just like me. I hear it. How can I respect that? How can yeah. you respect that, Larry? Question. Yeah, um, and Christians all you know, they will all the time tell you that Jesus want, told you to love your enemies. Mm. You know, so what George is saying is, uh, you know they say love your enemies but then they don't that's sure. just hypocrisy though and and the first mm -hmm. and the, i'm putting on my christian hat here okay. they'll uh, they'll Very come rare. back and, and say uh you know jesus obviously told you to love your enemies but that what they don't realize is in luke 14 26 he tells you to hate your family mm. and he says if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother or wife or children or brethren or sister yea mm. even his own life he cannot be my disciple Wow. So love your enemies and hate your family is, is yeah. the message that comes across here. <laughs> not, not to make John uncomfortable because we do have a person from UK in the group, but the crusades are quickly forgotten. And a lot of people forget that that actually happened on multiple instances. Mm -hmm. and, if, and to turn around and say, love your enemy right after those yeah. series of campaigns is very bizarre. And the inquisitions uh, only ended at the beginning of the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Right. So that wasn't yeah. that long ago. John Richards, what's up? Well, before I join any religion, you know, I, I want to fact check consumer advice. So there's pros and cons to everything, isn't there? So what does pastafarianism offer? I, I think I know a bit about what Christianity offers. It's, um, you know, you go to heaven if you're good and you go to hell if you're naughty. I'm not sure I like that. But mm. pa does, does pastafarian offer a better deal? Good yes, so uh, we have a beer volcano. And uh, we have a stripper factory. So yeah, uh, that, that is the Pastafarian <laughs> heaven. And it's the all gender accepted uh, stripper factory. It's, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Well paid, yeah. very well maintained. Yeah. Everything's okay. great. And, it, and it's not about the exploitation of people. It's the uh, celebration willing, of the human body. The willing, yeah, celebration of the human body. Thank you. Yes. Sign me up. They got little like, right. <laughs> circles and everything. It's like, it's pretty classy for a stripper place. It is. And, it's very and classy. free or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> so. Well, I was just going to say that, um, you know, if you've got, uh, if you got to use faith to believe in your religion and every religion uses faith 
to you know believe that their religion is true why would you pick something with such a you know a, such a terrible hell i mean i would choose something like pastafarianism that has right. a good heaven and a good hell or not not the great hell well but, the beer yeah. the beer is stale <laughs> The yeah. beer is stale in the in the barbarian yeah. hell. So yeah, but uh, why would somebody pick a religion that, that burns you forever if you don't do what it says? Yeah. I know. Why not pick one that's a nicer version of hell? Sure. I, I'll tell you this: if the people who believe that there is a heaven, if those are the kinds of people that go to heaven, I'd rather not spend my time with them because yeah, they particularly are that the worst, heaven, some of the worst yeah. people in the world. But mm -hmm. I also say this, Larry, you're touching on something really great. If uh, Buddhists, I'm sorry, if many various different people, believers and their different gods all are using faith to get there. It's not so much a question of why believe in a bad mm -hmm. hell by choice or whatever. It's more of like, what does that say about faith as a reliable way to come to right. an accurate conclusion? Mm -hmm. And if anything, we should walk away with the idea that faith is not a reliable way to come to a conclusion. And any being that demands faith from you is demanding an unreliable test to establish that they are, are in fact but there, it's basically yep. asking you to stop asking the questions. <clears throat> it says, just take what I tell you on faith. Take what I say is truth, you know, whether it um, warrants it or not, you know, yeah, whether or not I give you every red flag in evidence. your brain, you're, mm -hmm. you're not working hard enough. If but, you're not sending yeah. off the red flags, you're not working hard enough. Yeah. You're not yeah. thinking about it. Dread, it sounded like you got something on your mind real quick. Nope. You nope. I'm in total Chris. agreement. Okay. I've just had a thought. He had a thought, then we go to Kristen. What's up? Well, if we could find out where Christopher Hitchens went, that's the place I'd like to go. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to spend time with him. Yes, that yeah. would be that would be awesome. And I'm sure he's hanging out at the beer volcano as we speak. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we had um, uh, Abdullah who's in, who's just uh, uh, spectating for now, just letting you guys know. Uh, okay. Kristen? If you can hear me, <clears throat> I, uh, give me a beep. Or are you still walking your dogs? He is, she's still got her mic muted. There, there, we, go. there, we go. there you go. Kristen, you can hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh -huh. So you said you had Christmas growing up. I'm wondering, did you ever use faith at all? even into Oh, adulthood? absolutely zero. No. I mean, as I was saying, we were in no way, shape <clears throat> or form, you know, in, indoctrinated period did you nice. ever have did you ever have a belief in something that you couldn't demonstrate actually existed absolutely not no never i just wow. was never <laughs> I, I, no invisible friends <laughs> yeah like not even santa claus not even invisible <laughs> friends or anything like that or like what is it, string theory <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, maybe as a child, I liked my Raggedy Ann doll. Okay, okay. At least okay. you could hold it. It was there yeah, in your that's hand. Yeah, that's true. That's real. true. That's true. Well, that's very alarm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think George did have a point. There is a very much S versus them mentality that comes from Christianity that I find to be toxic and, and harmful to a lot of different groups. If not, history has demonstrated that to be the case. Even mm -hmm. Black people have a problem. And we can, I don't want to get on that. Tangent. Sure. George. What's up? Get us back onto our next topic. Go well, I, I mean, I, I feel an affinity with Kristen and, and, and respect because, uh, you know, I hear Kristen's southern accent, which I don't have. You know, you can hear. Yes, you do. I'm yes, from... you do, George. You totally got one now. You totally got one now. <laughs> well, I think it was e probably easier for me to be an atheist in New York City than, than for Kristen to be an atheist in the Bible Belt is what I'm projecting onto her. Huh? She agrees. Oh, I agree totally. Where did you grow up, <laughs> Kristen? I'm very curious. So, could you hear me, Kristen? She was on mute there for a second. The South. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering where in the South. George, would you mind yeah. telling me your social security number while while we're still on? <laughs> 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 I, I'm fascinated. Clearly, the person who doesn't want to show their face doesn't want to also give their address. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even you have given us that conversation multiple times. So I will say this. Um, you know, if you were, you are always worried about, not necessarily worried, but you have clear reason to be concerned with the degree of surveillance that's going on by large corporate interests, right? What if you had a God that essentially knows everything about you and as long as all, and completely secure, completely, you know, 
uh, no one's breaking into God's account, right? Because we can't even find God, right? Here's a being that you can trust with all your information. Now you finally have a big brother that you can believe in. Isn't that better? So it's you become a Christian Google? now. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But it's just way bigger and also all powerful <laughs> and knows everything you're about to do too, even when you're living or dead. And listen, we'll hold all your secrets completely unless we need to tell them to a pastor. And then at that point, then the pastor knows too. But isn't that great? Why aren't you a Christian? Now you can respect that system, can't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> He, yeah. he hasn't he hasn't earned my respect at all. Has it, okay, okay. And I imagine that's a long way running. All right, all right, that's fair. They, they, they can't reinsert my body to the matrix, so I, I'm just I'm out. I, I, I can't well, go back. I, I can't I've go got back. a you got a precondition to earning your respect. He has to show up. He can't earn your respect if he doesn't <laughs> show up. <laughs> Guys, I feel like I feel like we got the topic all the way done. How about we go into some listener comments? Okay. <laughs> so uh, Poison Frog <clears throat> says, hey, I love the conversation you guys are having from last week's episode. Please keep up the good work. And I appreciate you having a Canadian on here uh, uh, from time to time. BC represent. So some love from there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that was from Poison Frog. Thank you very much for the comment. Thank you. Also, Quality DH says, hey, there's a, where's the audience for all this content? Solid production and you guys are interesting people. Is it predominantly engaged with somewhere outside of YouTube? Feels like I'd really enjoy um, having uh, a drink with you folks. And so we are simultaneously broadcasting on, I guess, our individual channels. We'll do plugs for them. But we also have a podcast that we, we plug in between each half. And you can find it on Digital Free Thought Radio on Stitcher.com. Thank you guys so much for the comments. Let's try to pick a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a gamble here and pick a long one. <laughs> see if it doesn't give us oh no isn't it a waste of time to discuss whether or not god exists and that is from <laughs> lazarus jones um and that's from last last week's episode so um the idea that you know we come together and it sounds like we're chastising god to an extent we are but like we don't really have a valid target to, to <clears throat> target anyway but is it a waste of our time to do this guys dread pirate what's up I just wanted to give a, 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 a acknowledge uh, the watchers here on the live stream YouTube. Mm. Uh, Loma and hey, Dada's Loma. trading room are both on. So hello, hey, guys. So hey, what guys. does Lazarus think then? Well, why does he think it's a waste of time? Is he certain that God exists or is he certain that God doesn't exist? I He's a certain that it's a waste of our time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <clears throat> Larry, what's up? Oh, if, it's, if it's a waste we're of time, we're all going to burn in hell. Okay, Larry, go for it. Larry, <laughs> if it's a waste of my time, then I'm wasting an awful lot of my time. <laughs> hey, and that's what I started with. Imagine no, how much reason, time you would save. You no, were. no. The thing about it is, it's not so much the belief in God itself is bad or uh, <clears throat> requires our, our attention. It's what the actions of the believers who believe in God, mm. you know, they do an awful lot of harm in the world and they have for thousands of years. All right. Yeah. I invite people to go to my blog and read what's so wrong with the religion anyway, blog, blog article. It goes into all the different things that, that religion uh, troubles and, and harm that religion has cr done to the world over time. Mm. Um, and particularly that, that, a listener or a commenter is welcome to go to my blog and read that article. So it's, I was on a long drive from Nashville last night and every single time I'm on the road, especially at night, I'm always concerned because there's always going to be one driver from Nashville back to my home. That's just crazy. And that starts doing some weird cutting off. And in the same aspect that it's not like I care about uh, complaining about religion every day it's more of like i'm trying to advocate for higher levels of critical thinking in the same way that i would advocate for driving safety or road safety mm. because i'm not so much complaining about oh you got to stick to the speed limit it's more of like i'm trying to educate the people who aren't following the rules that there's consequences for their action and it could be harmful to me d dramatically if if they were to do something that could ultimately lead to a devastating consequence for both of us both on the road or with how they think and how they vote or how they raise their children or mm -hmm. how they act and behave or what they support in society. It all has impacts on everybody. Right. And so I do these kinds of shows just to broadcast that there's a, there's a interested 
a disinterested party in your religious views. <laughs> and in mm -hmm. as much respectful way as possible, I'm simply asking that you apply some critical thought to what right. you well, so hard to believe. Mm -hmm. I, Abdullah, you came in. What's up? You went from a spectator to actual joining on the show. Abdullah, it's always good to have you on. We're nearing the end of the show. Uh, we we're talking today about the idea of why you should become a Christian. And I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like we're ready for our final points and some final plugs. So John Richards, what's your final points? Why should you become a Christian? What, what do you feel about that? Well, I don't think a very strong case has been made, and I'm leaning towards the beer volcano, personally. <laughs> we'll make room. We'll make Dread room. Dread Pirate, Dread Pirate, final words. Uh, well, I, I, I like pastivarianism. There, I just find no compelling reason to switch, uh, uh, switch horses at this point. Yeah. Um, can I plug my uh, channel? Absolutely. All cool. right. So... Uh, you can find me on YouTube. I live stream this at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. My uh, channel is Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. And we'd love to see you on. Thanks. And leave now, a comment. And tell me also about this Higgs boson channel. Reading. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that will be uh, coming up soon. I'm going to be doing my first show to commemorate uh, 100 subscribers to my channel. Nice. And I will be discussing in layman's terms, the uh, the import of the Higgs boson and what it means to us. Very cool. Now, mm. import in Canadian terms mean the importance? Yes. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Very cool. Very British. I love it. Very British. What's a boson? We'll talk about it when we have more time, George. <laughs> iPhone. iPhone. Kristen, do you have any last words before we close out today? giving her pause okay well we appreciate having you on the show chris and thank you so much for coming by uh doula you're gonna join us in the after party i'm super excited being able to talk to you again uh my last words is hey god you can come out i'm totally fine with it i mean you, you don't have to stop hiding it's it's totally cool if you do i won't be able to use faith to get to you anymore but i don't value faith as a reliable way to come to conclusions anyway and you shouldn't demand that from people to believe in someone who is allegedly as great as you so deal with it otherwise because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lower my standard of evidence just to appease you meet me at least on my level if you created me right. in the first place show up larry show best up. hide and seek yeah. champion of the world though i'll get a trophy one day larry what's up <laughs> oh not a lot um those who are interested in my blog i mentioned earlier can find it at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism i have a book out um it's called atheism what's it all about it's available on amazon and my youtube channel can be found by searching for larry Rhodes or doubter five if you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org if you have any questions for the show you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail Dot com. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.